In order to be effective and efficient in any DAW or any software application, you have to be very familiar with the GUI. GUI is an acronym for Graphical User Interface. It's a fancy way of saying how you interact with the software. It's basically what you see when you look at the software. In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to the different areas of Logic's graphical user interface. A firm grasp of the graphical user interface will give you a strong foundation on which to learn Logic. You will know when and why to use different areas of the software instead of guessing. Let's start on the macro level and then work our way through each area one at a time. This tutorial will just introduce you to different parts of the graphical user interface. I will cover them in greater detail in subsequent tutorials. To start on the macro level, we must start with this. The main window. Your main window is where you can access all the major working areas of Logic Pro. As I access the different areas of the user interface, they will populate the main window. Because of this, this window will get very crowded really quickly. So what I want to do is hide my dock. This is the dock. In OS X, they call this the dock. And right now with the dock showing, which is the default behavior of the dock, it is limiting the ability for me to use the entire screen for my main window. To hide the dock, hold down Command Option and hit D, and it will duck off of your screen. If you want to see the dock again, just take your mouse to the bottom of the screen and your dock is available to you. Once I do that, I'm just going to drag my main window all the way to the bottom of my screen to use all of that space and pull my mouse here and I have access to my dock if I need it. Now, there are two of your working areas already present in the main window, the control bar and the tracks area. Let's start with the control bar. Across the top of the main window is the control bar, which includes buttons that let you access different parts of Logic Pro, as you will see pretty soon. Transport controls to control the project's playback, a master volume slider to adjust the overall volume of the project, and other controls. In the center of the control bar is the LED, where you can view the current playhead position, move the playhead, and set the project's tempo, key, and time signature. The central part of the main window is the tracks area. You record and arrange your musical material in your project on tracks in the tracks area. There are several different types of tracks. Three examples are here in my project. I have an audio track with audio regions on the track. I have a software instrument track with MIDI regions on the track. And I have a drummer track with a drummer region on the track. When you make a recording, import an audio or a MIDI file, or add an Apple loop, it appears as a region on the selected track. More about regions later. Next, let's discuss the inspector. You can either click this button or hit the letter I to access the inspector. So I'm going to click this button, and this over here is the inspector. Also, if I hit the letter I, it will hide it, and if I hit the letter I, it will show the inspector again. In the inspector, you can view and edit parameters for the selected region, the selected track, and other items. The channel strips for the selected tracks and the output appear in the lower part of the inspector, allowing you to view and quickly edit channel strip parameters and plugins. The library can be accessed with this button or via the shortcut of Y. Y hides it, and Y shows your library. The library allows you to audition patches and choose a patch for the selected track. When you choose a patch, those settings are applied to the currently selected track. So with the audio track selected, you see I have these available patches. If I go to a software instrument track, I get a different list of patches. And if I go to a drummer track, I get even another set of patches available for that particular track. And you can choose a category over here to the left. So if I want drum machine category, then I'll have these options for different drum machines. If I go to an audio track, I may choose a, I don't know, voice category. 
and then I have these options of different patches for voices. And on a software instrument track, I may choose a keyboard category and then get another category on the keyboards of organs and then see all of these patches available for that particular track. Next up is the smart controls. You can access the smart controls by either clicking this button or using the shortcut B. And I'm going to select a software instrument track so we'll have some smart controls. So hit B again and now you can see my smart controls. Smart controls let you quickly adjust the sound of a selected track using a set of predetermined on-screen controls. So in this case, I've opened smart controls and I see the screen controls for these look like compressor controls and these look like controls for the actual virtual instrument on the track. So if I open up the electric piano and I move this treble knob, it should move this treble knob. And it does. And if I move this bass, you'll see it move that bass knob. Close this out. And then these screen controls control parameters in the compressor plugin. So if I move the threshold, you'll see it adjust the threshold. If I move the ratio, you see it adjust the ratio, so forth and so on. Next is the mixer. I can either click this button or I can use the shortcut X. When you open your mixer, you can also adjust the height of the mixer by putting your mouse here and you'll see this tool and you can drag down or up to display the entire mixer. The mixer is where you adjust volume, pan, and other channel strip settings, mute and solo channels, add and edit plugins assigned to channel strips, and control the signal flow of your entire project. 